Hey guys, my name is Tyler and today I'm going to be showing you how to turn a photo like this into something more like this using basic editing techniques in Lightroom. Let's jump on in. All right, so we are here in Lightroom and this is a program I like to use. There's a lot of other programs out there that are really similar that you can do a lot of the same things. So if you don't have Lightroom, don't worry because it's pretty much the same throughout a lot of the programs that you use for basic photo editing. So right now we're going to be uh, editing this photo here. It's a shot I took in Lake Moraine when I was in Banff. Um, I mean, as you can see, it's a pretty stunning area already. So um, it's hard not to get a good photo at this location. This is one of the most photogenic locations for a photographer, as you might have seen a lot of photos of this place. But um, yeah, let's mess around with it a bit. So first what I like to do is I like to change the blacks and the whites to get a more dynamic range out of the photo. This technique was taught to me by a friend, uh, Mike Dewey. Um, so what you want to do is you want to hold alt, uh, option alt, and let's change the blacks down so um, it shows a bit of it there. And we'll do the same with the whites, but we'll move it the opposite way, we'll move it up. So holding option and we'll drag it up so you can see a bit of white. Um, and that's pretty good right there. So that kind of sets your, your photo. Next what I like to do is I like to change the shadows and the highlights. So I will, I mean, remember these, you can always go back to these after to, to do little tweaks to it, but let's put the highlights and shadow, let's put the shadows up and let's put the sh highlights down. So you can see that um, all the way up, it's really bright, all the way down, it uh, really makes the sky a little bit darker, which I like. I mean, again, this is just my technique. A lot of people like to do different ways of doing it and other techniques, so this is just my way of editing photos. Next, I like to turn mess around with the temperature. So we'll boost up the temperature a bit to make it look a little more warm. Uh, as it was shot in the morning, so the sun was just coming out. Uh, as you can see, the water was really still. Um, let's boost it to right there. And let's turn the saturation up a bit. Let's keep it at, actually, let's keep it at negative six. And let's boost the vibrance up a bit. I like to boost the vibrance more in saturation because if you boost the saturation, it sometimes looks a little fake. So let's boost the saturate the vibrance up to 30, and let's keep the saturation down to like negative 15. Remember, you can always come back and mess around with this after. Next, oh, I forgot about this. Next, I like to uh, um, put the contrast up a bit just to get uh, a darker, a darker look in the shadows. Uh, more of a black punch. So let's turn that up to, let's say, let's go with 28, sure. All right, and the clarity, this is a big one. A lot of people uh, don't like the clarity as much. I, for my preference, I like to mess around with the clarity a bit because it really pops the photo. So what I like to do is put the clarity up, maybe let's go to 20. You can always change that after as I'll show you different techniques of messing around with the clarity. So yeah, that looks pretty good. Uh, as you can see, this is after already, and this is before. So uh, before and after. Already it looks a lot better. Next, what you wanna do is, uh, I don't really usually mess around with this, but this is also another way to um, change your highlights, shadows, darks, that kind of stuff. Uh, yeah, so down here is where you can kind of choose each color that you wanna change. So. Here we can move, we can boost the reds. Let's boost the reds a bit and the saturation. You don't notice it too much, but a bit. Let's boost it up to like 36. The oranges, you can boost up. If you want a vibrant look, you can boost it up. The same, if you don't want it to have such a vibrant look, you can drop these down and you can make the colors look more, more uh, dark, which is uh, another way of people editing their photos, which also looks really good. But for this one, let's boost it up to make them more vibrant. Let's go 15, 16. Yellows, you don't really tell much in the yellows, but you can kind of see it in the trees. Uh, let's keep that out there, sure. Greens, you can see it boosts the greens a bit. Aquas, don't really tell much, but a little bit on the water. Let's keep that up because it gives a little bluish look on the water. And the blues, uh, you can see the canoes and the sky are boosted. I'm gonna leave that at zero because I'll mess around with that in a different area. Down we go here. Um, I like to turn, if you have, if you're shooting in a light, a low ISO, uh, you won't get as much grain, which is um, good. So when you're shooting photos, it's better to have a lower ISO. 
So the lower the ISO, the less grainy your photos are going to look for a majority of the time, unless you're using like a, if you're using a tripod, you can get a really low shutter, which is uh, also really good. But yeah, so let's boost the sharp, the sharpness up to 50, is what I like to do. Um, and if you do see a little bit of grain or anything like that, I like to put the masking up to like nine or eight or nine. And then this noise reduction here up to about eight or nine too. That just gives off any like, anything that is grainy, it will kind of distort it and hide it a bit. Okay, and if you go down here, this is where um, you can change the, remove some of the, the um, edges. So as you can see, I don't know if you can really tell in this photo, but on some photos you'll see it'll have like a, a weird greenish line around an object. So what I do is just click that and it just gets rid of it. Basic, basic, basic. We'll get rid of any weird outlining um, colors around the canoes or trees or anything like that. Sometimes you'll see like a blue tint around the trees <clears throat> and that's just, that will help remove it. Um, what you can do is zoom out. What you can do also is uh, enable color corrections. That kind of just centers the photo more and it looks less fisheye. So it depends on what you want. You can also select the lens you're using if it doesn't already know. So here it already knows I use a, a 16 to 35 millimeter lens um, shooting at 16 millimeters, all wide open. So let's just not do that right now because it kind of like how it looks right now. Fisheye a bit, a little bit of fisheye. Um, so we go down here you can see where you can you can change the rotations if you want to spin it and you can see how you get a white line around it if you don't want that white line you line around it you hit the constant crop uh, constrained crop sorry uh, and that will get rid of that so now when you rotate it it will just kind of crop it but I mean it's pretty centered already so we'll just keep that you can also scale it in if you want to scale it in scale it out let's just keep that at zero so it's pretty centered, uh, I like how it looks, and that's good. So next, what you want to do, what I like to do, is I like to um, sharpen up the water a bit, because you can see there's a really nice reflection here with the canoes. Uh, and so if you want to make that pop a bit more, um, I like to grab this tool here, go down here, click, and drag. Oh, sorry, I undo that. Let's undo that. Let's... Um, click and drag up and so that selects everything and that's like a, a buffer zone so everything below this buffer zone will be highlighted so now uh, let's set everything back to normal and you can see we can mess around with the settings here and that will only be changing this bottom area that is selected so let's turn the, the clarity up a bit and as you can see like it really really boosts the, the uh, canoe reflection which I like uh, let's turn that up. The Deha dehaze is kind of like if you get like dust or if there's a bunch of it's a it's like a really misty night or something like that, and you don't want it to be so like foggy looking. This will help a bit. I don't really like to mess with this too much. Um, let's turn the shadows up a bit. Uh, the highlights up a bit, sure. And let's make this a bit more yellow look. Yeah, it looks good. So now we press enter, enter again, and as you can see, it's more uh, it's popping a lot more. We can do the same with the mountains. We can grab this and we can click and drag, but as you can see, it kind of selects everything in the upper corner, which I don't want to do. I'm going to um, I'm going to use my brush. This is another technique. You can use your brush uh, to select certain areas. You can do it down here as well to be more accurate, but it was a quick edit and I just wanted to do this quickly. So, uh, so let's do the mountains now. As you can see, uh, mountains are a little bit more difficult because I don't really want to put the sky up or anything like that. So what you can do is you can click here and it says, uh, show selected mask overlay. So click that and let's zoom in to the photo and now I can make my brush bigger or smaller by changing that down here. The size, the feather, the flow, that kind of stuff. So now let's keep it about that size and as I click and drag and highlight you can see oh, what's going on here? Yeah, click and drag you can see it's turning to a red area and that is showing you what is being selected. And it's really helpful to know what you've selected and what you haven't selected. So um, this is going to be pretty basic, but you'll get the idea. You highlight everything that you want selected. There, looks pretty good. 
uh, and then afterwards, I mean, if you want it to be more accurate, you can go into erase and you can erase the areas that you don't want. Like, see here, I'm not too accurate around the trees. Um, it's kind of overlapping the trees, but you'll get the, you get the point. So um, let's turn this off. So now it doesn't show the red. And what we want to do now is let's turn up the clarity again. So as soon as you boost the clarity up, it gives a more... Um, better look on the mountains. So boost the clarity. Let's boost the dehaze a bit just because it gives it a more, little more pop. Saturation. Let's boost the saturation a bit on it. Give more yellow look to it. And let's put the temperature up on the mountains a bit to uh, let's go like 20, 23. Cool. And yeah, click enter. Enter. Um, what I forgot to tell you guys is uh, another technique you can do is um, go down to here and you can go down to hue. So see these green trees here? If you want these to be a different color, if you want it to look more like a fall look to it, what you do is you go to hue and you go down to the greens and you can change that color, only the green. So as you can see, you slide this bar, it's really, really green if you go right. It's really, turns into like a yellow look if you go left. So let's keep it like, let's make it a little more yellow. Let's keep it like negative 16. And then the yellow is the same thing. If you boost it all the way right, the yellows will go green and if you boost it left it will go more of a red as you can see it changes all of those colors so it's not just um, the trees here it's affecting the mountains as well so let's let's keep that uh, let's keep that like negative four and yeah if you want to boost the, the sky a bit as well you can go and you can use this tool here that I like to use and click and drag the sky as well as you can use the brush but let's just uh, let's just boost up the sky a bit to make it give it more pop so it's, again just basic edit let's pr turn the saturation up a bit and so it gives you more of a a blue a vibrant blue enter there you go that is a finished photo really really basic um, there's a couple other areas here you can mess around with but if you wanted to do a basic edit and it doesn't take very long at all this is the techniques I like to use so as you can see this is before and this is after. Big difference, as you can see. Uh, a lot more pop to the photo, and it just makes it look a lot, a lot more alive. So, yeah, that is how I edit my photos in Lightroom. I hope this helped you guys out a bit. Like I said, there's a lot of other programs out there that are really similar to Lightroom that you can use, just a different format and a different layout. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for a simple, easy, and basic way to edit your photos, I definitely recommend Lightroom. Super easy to use, and it can make a basic photo look a lot better. Um, yeah, so if you like this video and you want to see more future videos, uh, tutorials, that kind of stuff, please subscribe to my channel and leave a comment below of what you like to see.